There are tons of videos explaining how nuclear fusion works. But let's take a closer look at the consequences of abundant electrical energy. Imagine a future where electricity is no longer scarce, where fusion reactors deliver nonstop, costs fall steadily towards zero, and every device, factory, or city that needs electricity has an abundance. That's what essentially unlimited electric power means in practice. By the end of this video, you will understand exactly what kind of future we are heading toward, who the winners will be and who the losers of unlimited electrical energy. Highly reliable, cheap, clean electricity sufficient to satisfy growing demand without constant worry about shortages or price spikes. This isn't science fiction. Fusion energy, paired with advanced grid design, storage, and regulatory transformation, promises to push us toward that world. But what would this actually mean for our infrastructure, economy, environment, and society? And where are the challenges? First, such electricity supply demands that the power grid evolve far beyond where many of today's grids are. Take Spain. Over 80% of its grid nodes are saturated, meaning more than four-fifths of connection points in its network simply cannot accept additional generation without risking instability or inefficiency. To handle unlimited power, we need massive upgrades. High Voltage Long Distance Transmission Lines, HVDC, to connect fusion plants, which may be located far from demand centers, to cities and factories. Smarter distribution systems, dynamic distribution substations, automated protection, flexibility in switching, managing two-way flows. Substantial storage, both short-term for balancing fluctuations and long-duration to cover nights, seasonal demand, outages. Regulatory reforms to allow investments at scale, appropriate incentives and faster permitting. Spain is already planning a huge hike in grid investment by 2030, 62% cap increase, to try to open up capacity for new demand. Without these, more generation doesn't help. It just results in congestion, wasted potential and risk of blackouts or grid instability. Economic effects, prices, growth and industry if electricity becomes abundant and cheap, household and industrial electricity bills would drop, especially where generation and supply margins are large. This frees up income for consumers and reduces operating costs for businesses. Lower energy costs could unlock growth in energy-intensive industries. Steel, cement, chemicals, synthetic fuels, and data centers for AI and computation. Investment in new types of infrastructure becomes more viable. Labor markets could shift. Higher demand for jobs in energy infrastructure, manufacturing, maintenance, and perhaps less for jobs in fossil fuel extraction or inefficient legacy plants. Wages may rise in some sectors. Consumer savings could expand spending elsewhere. Yet, gains are not automatic. Who owns or regulates the fusion plants? How the savings are passed consumers and what policies, taxes, subsidies, contracts are in place will determine whether costs fall evenly or benefits get captured unevenly. Environmental and Climate Implications Unlimited power from clean sources like fusion could be transformative for climate. If fusion displaces coal, gas, and oil, greenhouse gas emissions drop dramatically. That could help meet climate targets and allow large-scale deployment of carbon removal technologies, green hydrogen, desalination, etc. But there are trade-offs. To build lots of reactors, you need materials that can withstand neutron bombardment, high heat loads, and harsh conditions. Things like the reactor first wall, diverters, Blankets must be replaced, and current material science research is still working on durability, embrittlement, transmutation. More power usage also means more demand for raw materials, land, cooling water, and possibly ecological disruption if infrastructure is sited poorly. Without careful environmental planning, some of the externalities could outweigh some benefits. But power abundance doesn't automatically mean fair power. Urban centers in wealthy countries will likely benefit first. Remote or rural areas may lag behind due to lack of infrastructure investment. Countries currently dependent on fossil fuel exports may lose revenue and political influence, and their workers may face disruption. On the flip side, countries that adopt fusion early may gain energy independence and strategic advantage. Access, affordability, and reliability will become major equity issues. Policymakers will need to ensure that power savings reach ordinary households, not just industries or large consumers. While the promise is huge, there are serious constraints. Material science is a big blocker. Reactor materials must survive very high neutron flux, helium embrittlement, radiation damage, etc. Current research shows progress but also indicates significant uncertainty in component lifetime. Long-term research and design strategies for fusion energy materials has to be done. Efficiency losses, conversion losses, transmission losses, especially over long distances, storage round-trip inefficiencies. These reduce the effective usable power. Grid instability. Managing peaks, surges, unexpected loads, ensuring frequency and voltage control. Even renewables already challenge grids with intermittency. Fusion may help, but only within a system designed for flexibility. Regulatory and political. Policies often lag behind technology. 
market designs built around scarcity or fossil fuel, incumbents may resist change. Permitting, safety, licensing, public acceptance all could slow deployment. Capital costs, huge upfront investment. A fusion pilot plant in Germany by 2035, built by Focus Energy, Air VEA, and HESA, is estimated at 5 to 7 billion euros. Costs may fall later, but early plans will be expensive. But let's have a look at geopolitical and global consequences. Countries with early access to fusion tech, strong infrastructure, and strong policy will get strategic advantages. Energy independence, industrial advantage, export potential in fusion-relevant supply chains. Traditional energy exporting countries could stand on the losing side. They will face economic shift concerning global trade patterns in energy, raw materials, and technology. Also, questions of regulation, export control, safety standards, and intellectual property will be central. Fusion is not free of geopolitical risk, and we'd also see major changes in everyday life. Heating and cooling will become cheap and ubiquitous. Electrification of transport becomes easier. EVs, public transit, maybe even airborne transport may shift. Data centers and AI infrastructure could expand rapidly. Perhaps with edge computing, real-time services that are now too energy intensive. Industries like desalination, synthetic fuel production, large-scale carbon capture, large-scale water pumping become viable at scale, leading to the solution of some of the most urgent problems of mankind. Indoor farming could become widespread, growing crops entirely in a controlled environment. Indoor farming uses hydroponics or aeroponics instead of soil. Artificial lighting, typically LEDs, to replace sunlight or supplement it heavily. Tight control over temperature, humidity, CO2, ventilation. The goals are year-round production consistency, high yields per square meter, proximity to consumers. It's appealing. Reduce transport, lower water use, ability to farm in places with bad climate or little arable land. But that control comes at a cost. For crops like lettuce, Studies show typical energy consumption in vertical farms is about 10 to 18 kilowatt hours per kilogram of produce, while greenhouse farming consumes about 5.4 kilowatt hours per kilogram for similar leafy greens. The same studies estimate facility level energy per area of around 850 to 1,150 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. Lighting is the single largest consumer power, often 55 to 80 percent of the total energy in indoor farms, while outdoor farms use sunlight, climate control, HVAC. Heating, ventilation, cooling, humidity regulation adds another large share. Pumps, water recirculation, air circulation also contribute. But progress is also coming here. AI control systems are one opportunity. Cornell University researchers found that with smart environmental control and optimized lighting and climate schedules, energy per kg lettuce could be reduced from 9.5 kilowatt hour per kilogram down to 6.4 kilowatt hour per kilogram in many locales. What will also change with endless electrical power is consumer behavior. Less concern about electricity bills, more for energy-heavy lifestyles. But that could also increase consumption, which means infrastructure stresses remain. Energy-heavy lifestyles could comprise large, poorly insulated homes, houses with many rooms or floors, weak insulation, lots of windows, old construction, or drafty walls use much more energy for heating in winter and cooling in summer, continuous heating or air conditioning. Constant use of HVAC systems to maintain very warm or very cool indoor temperatures especially in places with extreme outside temperatures. Extreme cold or heat days drive up home energy usage significantly. Multiple energy-intensive appliances, hot tubs, swimming pools, saunas, large electric dryers, ovens, multiple refrigerators, and big entertainment systems as multiple TVs, gaming rigs, etc., especially if used often. Affluent areas like Athens, California can serve as an example. They have extremely high residential electricity use because of large homes and big appliances. As a conclusion, we can say that unlimited or nearly unlimited electric power is a game changer. It promises clean air, economic growth, new industries, better living standards, and energy security. But the transition won't be smooth. Grids must be upgraded. Materials must meet extreme demands. Policies must adapt. Equity must be prioritized. In the end, whether unlimited power makes the world significantly better or introduces new risks depends greatly on how we manage the rollout, how quickly we modernize infrastructure, how equitably we distribute benefits, and how carefully we anticipate environmental and social trade-offs.